to think about going to the demonstration this uh, Saturday. And we've got lots of cards sitting on the table about it as well. Um, our next speaker is Leah Liban, who is um, our local. She is an executive of Jews for Justice, and she's also in our local PSC and was the chair of it. Mm. And she's wonderful, and she's done great work <laughs> in Palestine. She's gone there as an observer and put herself at risk as well. Leah. <laughs> I have to just live up to that introduction. Okay. Um, before I um, give my talk, which is specifically from the perspective of Jews for Justice for Palestinians, I want to give, bring greetings from the head office of the uh, Palestine Solidarity Campaign wow. and to remind everybody that on the 9th of um, September, there is a national lobby. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to go and lobby your MPs. They are supportive as well here later from uh, Vicky Foxcroft. They are supportive locally, but it is really important to keep up that pressure. Um, now, I don't know how much um, everyone here knows. I can see some familiar faces, and I'm glad to say many, many unfamiliar faces. So I don't need to go into the horrors of what's been going on in the last um, 50 days. Um, but I do want to place everything I have to say, and I was particularly asked to address the issue of anti-Semitism, and I'll do my best to do that. But everything I say needs to be heard in the context of what's been going on recently, with more than 2,100 Palestinians dead, more than 11,000 injured, and more than 25% of the population displaced, at least 18 billion pounds worth uh, of damage uh, done, um, more than 360 factories uh, demolished, um, hectares and hectares, I don't know how many, of, uh, of agricultural land uh, destroyed. Um, and that this is the third bombardment of Gaza. They talk about it being a war. It's not a war. It's a bombardment. It's a massacre. Um, and, uh, and this is on top of, uh, as, as John said, the seven years of siege and 66 years of a refugee crisis, um, resulting from driving out the Palestinians in 1948. To say nothing of what's happening in the West Bank. And uh, the latest figures I've heard is there's more than 7,000 Palestinians in prison, the majority of them are political prisoners, and huge numbers, hundreds and hundreds have been arrested in the recent weeks while we've been focusing on Gaza. People have been killed and more arrests have been going on in the West Bank. I told you too. And, and also to remind everybody that under international law, Palestinians are under occupation and therefore have the right to resist, up to and including taking up arms. And just another bit of context, which I don't think is irrelevant, there is a huge gas field off the uh, coast of Gaza. Um, and, uh, and I read today that uh, Israel and Egypt are now coming to an agreement about that gas field, which is neither Israel's nor uh, Egypt's. Um, so from the perspective of Jews for Justice for Palestinians, we don't just say not in our name, but also there is no Jewish justification for the atrocities. Um, we need to exist mainly because Israel claims to speak for us. I make this point before, I don't go around saying I'm a Jewish woman against the cut, Jewish woman against austerity. But on this issue, partly because people hear the words anti-Semitism and end up being quiet. And I'm here to say you don't need to be quiet on this issue. We also exist to say that crying anti-Semitism anti is a scaremongering lie and it also distorts and cheapens the very real experience of Jews throughout centuries, on and off for centuries, not constantly, that have really experienced, obviously culminating in the, uh, in the Nazi Holocaust. Um, I'm going to try and skip some. Uh, and the, the question for us is, what lessons do you draw from the oppression of Jews throughout uh, centuries? Do we draw the lesson that never again means we have to take military might be incredibly strong, and to hell with everybody else. Um, no, we draw the lessons, as many, many other Jewish people have done, uh, and as many oppressed people have done, um, of we must stand with the oppressed. The fact that we're not currently the victims, for whatever their crying is about how anti-Semitism is massively on the rise, Jews are not the victims at the moment. And uh, the question is, who do you stand with? And we stand with the oppressed. And even from a religious point of view, we are exhorted to welcome the stranger, for ye were strangers yourselves in the land of Egypt. Um, 
And we remember the story. I remember for myself when I had the, those of you know, there's a Passover meal, the liberation of the Jews from uh, Egypt and slavery. Whether that's true or not is a whole other debate. But it's a story that is a, an important part of our culture. And my abiding memory of that is that when the Jews were celebrating uh, after the uh, Egyptians had been uh, drowned, God said, do not celebrate, for these are my people too. And this is the, what stick, stuck with me. Um, so I'm not personally religious, but what I've learned from that history, and I'm not unique in this, is, uh, is, um, is that many, many, you know, but there's another part of Jewish culture and political tradition which saw that many people saw that turning to socialism was actually the solution to anti-Semitism. And such Jews, and they were many in Eastern Europe in particular, were very much in the majority against the Zionists. And they were really hated, hated by the people who saw that the answer was to have a state of their, of, of their own. Um, even Dreyfus, and those of you who know, I won't go into the historic details, the very famous case which the uh, original Zionist theoretician uh, Theodor Herzl said is what turned him to convince him that you had to have your own state. Dreyfus himself said socialism is the answer and not uh, Zionism. And this, uh, the, 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 the belief in having a, uh, needing a Jewish state was a minority view right up until the Holocaust. Um, and even throughout the, the, uh, the oppression, there were, there were leaders in the Warsaw Ghetto, for example, who during and after said, no, Zionism is, is not the answer. Um, and of course, we know many Jews were slaughtered in that, uh, in that uh, terrible uh, time, but they weren't the only ones. Um, we, we don't hear enough about the Roma that were killed, uh, about disabled people, about the gay men, about communists, Catholics, trade unionists and also Soviet prisoners of war, who also found themselves in the death camps. And Israel, and those who support it uncritically, ruthlessly abused the Holocaust to justify any actions and also to proclaim some sort of ongoing victimhood. Um, and the notion of a Jewish state as an answer is perhaps understandable. And there was a huge amount of understanding and compassion. So while I, I take completely what John was saying about the geopolitical reasons for the creation of the State of Israel. The reason it was uh, seen as it was, it was popular because of the huge compassion throughout the world um, after the, those terrible things. But if you think about it, where is any logic in having a state that is Jewish and democratic? It is actually a contradiction in terms. And just to having a state that is exclusively Muslim or that privileges Muslim people, white people, black people, Buddhist people, the best everyone else is going to have is second-class citizenship, benign second-class citizenship. And clearly what we see in terms of Israel is not remotely a benign uh, second-class citizenship. And as for keeping Jews safe, where is probably the most dangerous place on earth to be Jewish? Anyway, I... I um, <laughs> um, and in terms of this misuse of the Holocaust, um, some of you may have seen that last week um, that uh, 40... Survive, Holocaust survivors, people who've been in the camps or just escaped the camps who were on kinder transport and things like that, published a letter with outrage at the abuse of, uh, of their experience. And it was also signed by children and grandchildren and other relatives. All, in all, of about 350 people signed it. And how, I can read you some, but I think we haven't got time. I guess I'm, I'm going to read you a little bit. I won't read the full text. Um, Jewish survivors, descendants of survivors and victims of Nazi gener genocide unequivocally condemn the massacre of Palestinians in Gaza. There's much more. And we must raise our collective voices and use our collective power to bring an end to all forms of racism, including the ongoing genocide of Palestinians, Palestinian people. We call for an end to the siege of blockade. Uh, and we uh, never again must mean never again for everybody. And what is the reaction? This is the distortion that's happened, tragically, to Israelis. Um, how does Israel respond? I'm not saying this is the government response. I haven't heard that one yet. But this is the social media response. One comment. Those aren't Holocaust survivors. Those are probably collaborators with the Nazis. Another one. He's invited to go back to Auschwitz. These are survivors who were capos. Those of you who don't know capos, were the people who were given a, uh, their own room in the, uh, in the dormitories, and it was their job to make sure everybody came out for roll call, for work, whatever else it was. Um, 
So they're, they're, they were capos, they're leftist traitors. That's why they live abroad and not in the Jewish state. Another says, enough, they should die already. They survived the Holocaust only to do another Holocaust to Israel in global public opinion. And it gets worse. No wonder, this is, this is supposedly Jewish people. Uh, um, no wonder Hitler murdered six million Jews because of people like you. You're not even Jews. You're disgusting people, a disgrace to humanity, and so are your offspring. offspring. You are trash. Um, Holocaust survivors who think like this are invited to go die in the gas chambers. Oh. It's a whole other meeting, which we may have at some point, about the racism that's going on in, uh, in, in Israel, not only towards the Palestinians, but towards Sudanese refugees. And this idea of creating a state where Jewish people are somehow superior, I believe, is what's created a thinking whereby, while that is the extreme end, somehow that is even imaginable, actually, never mind permissible. So, uh, so we as Jews, we have to stand up because Israel claims to speak for me. I had a wonderful uh, email from uh, the Times of Israel Daily, which I stupidly take, saying, uh, please donate money to our beleaguered Israeli soldiers who are, this was a few weeks ago, who are about to go into Gaza. Send them comfort pack pack packages as they go to defend the state of Israel and the Jews of the world. And because they add that bit, I have to stand up. And Jews for Justice and the other organizations like Jewish Voice for Peace uh, in, in America um, need, need to stand up. We need to remember, um, I'm jumping a bit, but uh, uh, an important point, people will have heard of the town of Sterot. Sterot is the town, it's about a mile or less from the border with Gaza, um, that has received the largest number of rockets uh, from uh, Gaza. I went to Sterot. It was very interesting, very fascinating, and thankfully met a very peaceful woman there. Um, and these are where you may have seen pictures of people cheering on the bombing, and many of those will be from Sterot. What we mustn't forget is that that used to be a Palestinian village called Huj. So that's what uh, happens, and, and many, and those people will be living in Gaza. There are about 6,000 descendants of the people who were uh, evicted, evacuated, whatever you want to call it, from Huj in 1948. And technically, I have the right to return have a right to return to a place that I've never lived and my ancestors don't come from. And that's why I have to stand up while Palestinians, literally a mile and a half across the, uh, from where they used to live, can't actually go and visit, let alone live there. In relation to anti-Semitism, yes, there is anti-Semitism. Does it exist in our movement? Unfortunately, yes. Some of it's because people don't know the history. There's shorthand use. You hear the term about the Rothschilds in control which is a shorthand for the bankers, and it's a lazy shorthand, and we do need to educate people not to use lazy shorthand. But actually, my experience on the demonstrations um, that John referred to in visiting the local mosque and other mosques is an enormous welcome. It's an enormous welcome. And I saw an enormous welcome in the West Bank to Israeli Jews when they went, and instead of wanting to have a spurious dialogue as if there was some equality of suffering between the sun, the two sides, actually went to stand shoulder, with, by sh shoulder to shoulder with those uh, Palestinians who were facing evictions or uh, get tear gas on demonstrations were enormously welcomed. So again, it picks up from John's point. There is no intrinsic reason why uh, Palestinians, Muslims, Jews and Christians uh, can't, uh, can't get on. Um, I'm aware that I've spoken rather a long time and I am going to very quickly, uh, but I'm going to just tell you one little story. Um, about 10 days ago, I had the privilege of attending a meeting of the Jewish uh, leadership, the Board of Deputies of uh, British Jews. I got in. Um, and um, it's an interesting story, but the, uh, the interesting thing is they called the meeting to discuss with the Jewish uh, community how to... How to um, protect and promote the interests of Israel at this critical time. The meeting was, as you probably can imagine, absolutely ghastly. But several things were interesting, relevant, and possibly hopeful. First of all, the hall wasn't full. Um, the those attending, the audience, were furious with the leadership for not doing enough, not standing up and uh, doing enough to protect Israel and, and protect its interests. 
defend it. But at the meeting, we were told that the other side, that's us, had succeeded in writing 58,000 letters to MPs. And our side, that's them, had written 5,000. So please, can you all get on with writing letters, they said. And one said that they had had calls from an MP, or a couple of MPs, um, saying, please, can you get your people to write more letters because we're getting so many from the other side. And I am, there was a lot of cries about anti-Semitism. They are very, very worried. The only, the only cry they have now is anti-Semitism. Um, I just want to make one last point which is we are really proud and happy to be part of this movement. But you don't need us. You don't need us. We're not any special group of people. Anti-Semitism isn't a special form of racism. Racism is racism. We don't want any of it in our movement. You don't need us to be convinced that standing up Palestinian rights is not anti-Semitism.